You know, one of the problems I find right now is that manufacturers have so many different irons or drivers in their lineups right now that it is really difficult to differentiate between them all. And in today's video, we have a typical example of that where I've got two irons that are both game improvement irons, both from the same manufacturer, both super forgiving, both super long. So how do you decide which one is best for you? And although these two irons fall into the same category of game improvement style irons, trust me, they are very, very different. But before we go any further and I start hitting some golf balls and reveal what these clubs are, I want you to answer me this one very simple question. What do you determine forgiveness as being? Do you actually believe there is such a thing as forgiveness? I mean, let's be honest, a crap swing is a crap swing and you need help to eradicate those swing issues from a PGA professional or you go and watch Testing the Tips, our other channel. But joking aside, forgiveness for me is about what happens with off-centre hits. And that's something that I as a player do quite frequently, I imagine you do too. And what you don't want to see is a huge drop off in performance. So that's what I, just to clarify, when I talk about the most forgiving irons you can possibly look to use, I'm talking about when I don't get out the middle, whether it be a heel or a toe strike high on the face, what is happening in terms of all attributes. So that might be what kind of am I losing in terms of carry distance? What am I losing in terms of spin? All those kind of things. And that's what makes these two irons super forgiving. Right, let's see if we can hold a birdie on the greens, which roll out ball. Yeah, never quite hit, but the greens here at Carden Park, this is a Cheshire Corsa, probably the best I've seen them for quite some time. They're immaculate. It's just that easy. That is all I need to do. It's effortless. And the interesting thing from these clubs and both of them is that that's all it requires. It's all about tempo and rhythm. Take your time, let the club head do the rest. And these things are super forgiving and also super long. Slightly lower ball flight, but all the same, almost a half swing ball is firing on down there. The question is, what are these two irons? What makes them so forgiving and equally long at the same time? Now let's not forget this channel is all about the average golfer and what I'm keen to always find is trying to make, trying to find clubs that make the game a little bit easier. And despite what many people think, the Indian and not the Arrow, yes, I understand that concept, but at the same time, there are clubs that are more difficult to use than others. And the two featured in today's are the complete opposite to that. They are in fact the easiest irons you will ever pick up. And there's two to choose from. Well, the first thing to notice is that was ball B, that was ball A, and there is literally nothing that separates these two. They were two seven irons. We're gonna fire a couple more seven irons into this green, see what they do in terms of action on the green, because ultimately these are game improvement irons. They're super strong in terms of the loft, but they also fly extremely high. So club number one featured in today's video comes from Callaway. Club number two featured in today's video also comes from Callaway. They, for me, have two of the most forgiving iron sets out there right now. This first one, which arguably is the super game improvement iron of the two, is from the Big Bertha 23 lineup. And I've got to say, I've not hit anything that flies the ball so far, so high, and has such a big sweet spot. And that's a typical example of the ball flight. First of all, we've just about got to the front edge. It wasn't a super strike. It looks like it's come out the middle, maybe a little bit toey, but even still, the ball has flown out there. And what I'm hoping you're seeing from the camera behind is just how easy the swing is. I'm going to be looking at two irons, the Big Bertha. The next one I'm going to hit from the same spot is the Paradigm X. Again, super forgiving. But I'm also looking to highlight, like I said earlier, the differences between these two clubs because they may be super forgiving, they might be super long, but 
they're also very, very different. And that's the bit that I'm gonna highlight in today's video. So you've seen a couple of shots been hit with both iron and we've got some idea in terms of why I think these are forgiving and what I think forgiveness actually is. But I said at the beginning of the video, we'd separate these two in terms of, uh, well, first of all, let's look at the technology element that Callaway claims is different because it is very different. You're going to see a lot of bullet points on screen right now. We're going to go through every one. So pause it if you're interested and make your comparisons. But for me, the major difference is twofold. First of all, from a technology perspective, the Big Bertha is packed with a lot of tungsten. Then you switch over to the Paradigm X and you've got a foam filled hollow body dying with a forged face. That to me, from a, forgetting everything else that they do, because there's a lot of similarities then, in terms of technology, one's packed with tungsten, one's packed with foam. They do very different things in terms of the way they sound and the way they feel, which I'll talk about very shortly when we get a 9-9 in hand. And the next thing to discuss is the big, big difference is the way these things to look. Oh, the ball flight on that thing is ridiculous and it's right on the flag as well. Oh, two things there to note was one, really crisp strike and I'll talk about how it sounded very shortly. That was a 9-9, nine -nine, um, pitched and stopped again. Don't forget super strong loft and that's the first place I want to go is talk about the loft because they're almost identical on both sets of irons. Super, super strong. 27 degrees 7 iron in the Big Bertha, 27.5 in the Paradigm X. But I don't know what the loft is on the 9 iron but it'll be super strong obviously relative all to that 7 iron. But You've seen the ball flight, you've seen how that pitched and stopped. We're in midsummer uh, in the UK right now. Greens are still firm and uh, that ball has just come down out of their heavens and stopped. So, really super strong lofted, which means in theory they go super long and they do, but it's more that coupling up about they go super long when you don't quite get them out the middle is the bit that is the interest to me and the consistency across that club, fleet, club face and I keep coming back to forgiveness but like I said super ball flight I'm going to switch up right now into the 9-9 of the Paradigm X because the next thing I want to do is compare the two in terms of what I think in terms of that sound and feel. Is it tungsten or is it foam that has the best feeling of the shorter irons which I think is where you start to notice the difference and want that softer feel. Well I do at least. Maybe before I hit the shot we'll talk about the profile of the two. I've just put the uh, Big Bertha back but what I noticed was surprisingly from a from the back side of it and from the sole width then the big bertha looks to be a far bigger iron overall but when you sit these two nine irons together and you can have a look for yourself now they've got a very very similar sort of profile big thunk, uh, chunky <laughs> top line um, but the heel and toe is also lengthwise is also very similar that surprised me a bit because i thought the big bertha would have been naturally a lot bigger right if I can hit another good shot like that, we've got a good comparison to make between the two. That's another really good iron. Slightly softer feel. Oh my word, that's literally pitched and sat on the flag. I'd take them two shots any day, and this is the whole point again, isn't it? Super game improvement, irons, single figure, golfer, shouldn't be playing these things. The performance out the two clubs was fantastic, but what about the sound and feel? Well, for me, um, much softer feel coming out of the Paradigm X and that uh, foam injection makes a difference. Um, I also think, and again, you clarify this on those two sort of tech sheets that we put up, um, urethane microspheres is that the word or the terminology that Callaway use I'm pretty sure that's in the Paradigm X but not found in the Big Bertha and I've always been interested to see you know what kind of things they put inside to dampen and soften sound with Paradigm and Paradigm X irons this year they made a huge difference in the sound and feel of these irons because for me 
there's always in foam injected irons there's always a clicky element to the sound and they've eradicated that so without doubt if you're all about some sound and feel then paradigm x in my opinion is the much better feeling of the two there's a much more solid feel out of those but in terms of the ball flight and what they've done on the green well you can't split the two a couple of final things to consider first of all pitch mark ball i'll repair that very shortly uh pitch oh no pitch mark ball nothing to split them in that sense look i won't roll in these puts because i'm aware also that my uh, battery life on the camera is dying to death there's a few more shots rolling over for you now uh look it's simple this title is uh, the video is titled something along the lines of uh, the most forgiving and longest irons in 2023 firmly believe that to be the case um, but you've got to try them for yourself obviously and you've got to like what you see in terms of on the eye they're very very different aesthetically very very different uh, but profile very similar performance very similar i couldn't really split them personally out here on the golf course the one thing i would say that would draw me towards the paradigm is just that sound and feel is better for me however in terms of the big bertha i prefer probably the look and that sort of graphite gray finish that they've got on them also check out what shafts are available as standard in both of these they both come in at a similar price point which was in and around a thousand pound or near as damn it so there's a lot of money being spent here so make sure you get that decision right right before i've got one percent left on this uh, camera right now so before it cuts off on me thanks for watching subscribe if you don't already give me some feedback down below don't forget testing the tips go and check out that channel as well new one of ours i'm sure you'll love it right i've just about got it done see you tomorrow